How's your summer going? I really hope that uh, the sun's been shining and you've had uh, a great few weeks. Haven't uh, our deep dive into James been great so far? We've got a couple of weeks left and uh, we've been thinking a lot about what it really means to be a people of action, a people who have been through the reset and who are now saying, yes, come on, let's get involved. We're going to think about that word action a lot today because we've got to the passages now where we're thinking about what it really means. What does practical action mean? And James brings out a number of things uh, about how we should live. He talks about our tongue and our words. He talks about money and the rich oppressors. He talks about temptations, doesn't he, as we thought about a couple of weeks ago. And he talks about prayer. And these are just snapshots for James that he's trying to inspire the listeners, the original listeners, and therefore us today, about how to be people of action. And we're going to take that word action today, and we're going to think about some of those things that will help us live really practically into the coming months. So let's take the letter A, shall we? If we look here into verse 3, as has been read, uh, chapter 3, as has been read to us, it finishes in verse 13 onwards, discussing two kinds of wisdom. So our A is about asking for wisdom. If you look at verse 17, it says, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, then considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit. It's impartial and sincere. Wow, I need that kind of wisdom in my life. That wisdom is pure and it thinks of others and it's full of mercy and it brings peace and it bears good fruit. That's the kind of wisdom I need so that I can be a person of action. And where does it come from? That wisdom comes from heaven. And so as Simon reminded us last week, we need to be people who listen, who ask for wisdom and then listen to what wisdom God has got for us. So let's ask for wisdom. Secondly though, I think is something that uh, is particularly highlighted around the section on our words and on the power of the tongue. The beginning of chapter three highlights how powerful our words are. It talks about the fact that our tongue can be like a wild fire. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes my tongue, my words get me into the most trouble because often they come, the words come out of a place of being too busy or those words come out of a place of feeling stressed about something or the children want food and food's not ready. So I, I speak words of like, just stop pressurizing me or whatever. Our tongue is probably one of the parts of our body that gets us into the most trouble. The C of action is confess regularly. I need to often apologize to God, apologize to others around my words. I need to often confess that I acted wrongly, or perhaps it's with our money, or perhaps it's with something else that, that we uh, find here in James around temptation. In recent months, I've been using the Lectio 365 bedtime prayers as a way of pausing before I go to sleep. And one of the things that encourages us every night is to confess, to confess things that throughout the day we just know have not been right before God or have hurt others too. Confessing regularly, it's so important. It brings life back into our body. It brings forgiveness and setting us free free from the things that we have done wrong. So not only do we need to ask for wisdom, but we need to confess regularly. That's my encouragement to you today. Why don't you pause at the end of this talk and just say, Lord, I want to confess right now. Or perhaps like me, you want to use some bedtime prayers just as a way of regularly every evening saying sorry to God. 
The T, though, of action, uh, again, it brings out here in the bit about the tongue. It's about training. Let me read verse three, T for training. When we put bits in the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take a ship as an example. Although they are large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered with a very small rudder whenever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small start spark. The tongue also is a fire and a world of evil among the parts of the body. Those verses remind us that a horse needs training to obey its master and a boat needs a, um, somebody, a pilot, who's going to drive it in the right way using the gifts they have, the skills they have to drive a boat. Training is an important part of the Christian life. It would be amazing to think that we get it right straight away, that our actions are automatically in line with God's way. But sadly, our experience isn't of that. We have to train hard. We have to think about how we are going to live and then we need to do it again and again. We all know that habits take a while to form, at least six weeks, we're told. But actually, training is really important in the Christian life. It's like when I was just talking about confessing. I didn't just say you need to confess once. We have to confess regularly and we need to get into healthy rhythms and healthy habits. We need to train. Let's think about our tongue. We need to train ourselves not to gossip. We need to train ourselves to use good words, not bad. We need to train ourselves to see the best in people. We need to train ourselves not to moan. We need to train ourselves not to criticize. It's not something that we can just download from heaven. It's something we have to train ourselves in. And as we begin to speak words of goodness and encouragement, it's very soon that we begin to realize that actually we are speaking those more easily, that we don't have to think about it so much, that actually I'm speaking words of encouragement to people way more often than I am of rebuke or of criticism or of gossip. As we train ourselves, then we begin to see that we are acting more and more like Jesus. Let's think about the I, the I in action. Now, the Bible talks a lot, and here in verse 7 to 10 as well, about what's on the inside. Because what's on the inside and the outside often don't match. Think about what Jesus said to some of the Pharisees. You can stand there on the street corner proclaiming the truth and praying and fasting and looking like you follow me. But I know your heart. What's on the inside is so important. And when we're talking about action, and Simon again reminded us of this last week, when we're talking about action, we're not talking about just looking good for the sake of the kingdom or doing the right thing so we look good. It's about allowing God to change the inside. Let's think about our tongues. What comes out of our mouth begins in our minds. What's the inner narrative that goes on in your head? I wonder if other, someone else could hear it, what would they say about it? Often our inner narrative comes out too quickly to be the outer narrative and often that's not good. I found this season really hard with the overthinking element that I can be tempted to live in. My brain goes round around in circles and before I know it I'm kind of in the worst place ever because my mind has overthought. What's inside affects therefore my action. If we're going to be people of action we need to make sure that our insides are full of wisdom and that our insides confess regularly and that our inside narrative is being trained before we look at the outside. How do we do that? Well it's all about allowing the Holy Spirit to be at work in us 
and it links to the training element that I just talked about. The O though is the outside because actually there are things as a Christian that we do that perhaps are really different to the rest of the way the world lives. Chapter 5 of James uh, talks a lot about money and talks about how there were these corrupt Christians who were not treating um, those who worked for them properly. They're called the unfair oppressors in this chapter. And it goes on in verse four to talk about how that they weren't sharing um, the wages correctly and how their outside life was being unjust and not based on what should be um, good and true actions. They weren't treating those who were working for them properly. They weren't being generous. What's outside should be guided by what's inside, absolutely. But we need to make sure, we need to look regularly and say, do you know what? Okay, Jesus uh, was really generous, wasn't he? Uh, and he's asking me to be generous. So therefore, what does the outworking of that look like? How do I use my money to be generous? Or how do I use my time to be generous? Or my words to be generous to others? God's working inside so that our outside looks different. So we've asked for wisdom, that's how we live. We've confessed regularly the sea. We're committing to a life of training. We are thinking about what's inside. We're thinking about how we live outwardly, the outside. What about the N? Well, we came up with a few things around the N, um, but actually, at the end of the day, it's all about the now. It's all about the now. It's not about what you're going to do tomorrow. It's not about what you're going to do in four months time or when this restriction is lifted or when this is sorted in my life. You see, James was about the now. He was saying, let's, let's, let's live in the now because these are the days that God has given us. And I don't know what God's saying to you right now, but for me, as I was preparing today, I was thinking about that training and how actually I could say, do you know what? I don't need to uh, be doing that in my life now. Or well, that isn't a problem for me right now, perhaps gossip or whatever. Um, so I don't need to do anything around that now. And, and I felt God say, no, a training, uh, an athlete trains even when there isn't a big race coming up. If you think about David on the hillside, he wrote most of the Psalms uh, and, and sang and, and was training on top of the hillside and learning how to shoot his sling, learning how to protect the sheep so that when he got to face Goliath, his faith in God was secure, but also he knew the skills ready for that battle. Now is the time to begin to act. Now is the time to commit to the training re regime that God has got for you. Now is the time to allow him to be at work so that our outsides reflect what God is doing on the inside. Now is the time. So as we begin to come towards the end of James, I guess my question is, are you ready for some action? Are you ready to live practically so that you can go into the next season that's beginning now, even now, committed to God and living his ways? Hopefully these given you some practical ways. You might want to go back into James and have a little look. He talks a lot about uh, how these action words work within our tongue or with our words. He talks a lot about how it works within our money. But of course, the Bible is full of other ways to live. But why don't you dig back into these words today and say, God, what are you saying to me? And how are you going to be at work in me this week?